Let's absolutely not get it twisted. The whole internet wrestling bubble, the hardcore wrestling fan bubble, has a bad habit of overrating certain types of talent, certain types of wrestlers. And especially putting a greater emphasis on their importance than what reality says it is for wrestlers, excuse me, independent contractors, excuse me, sports entertainers that are ultimately released or let go by WWE. It's one of those things, very easy to yell up at Titan Towers and piss and moan at them. Especially when it's one of your types of wrestlers. Which so many of them are the same now. So, let's not get it twisted here. Cesaro is not the type of guy that you build a major pro promotion around. And if you think he is, then you are wrong. If you think he is, then thank God you're not running a wrestling promotion, otherwise you would be bankrupt. Chapter 7 style. He's not that type of dude. He is not a true franchise piece. He is not an A-plus player. And that's okay. Not everybody is going to be an A-plus player. Not everybody needs to be an A-plus player. Not everybody should be an A-plus player because if everybody is an A-plus player, then you have no A-plus players. It's like that dumb dick Meltzer star rating system. Once you start talking about putting six stars and seven stars on matches, well, now your three, three and a half star matches are middle of the road. That's not good anymore. You've broken your own fucking scale because you're a moron. So, Cesaro was never one of those types of dudes. Now, in this generation of WWE, does that mean that he shouldn't have gotten a t run with the world title? I wouldn't go that far. Because, I mean, fuck, you look at some of the scrub asses over the past decade that have had the WWE title. Is Cesaro really that much worse than the worst of those? Probably arguably better than at least a couple of them. Point being is, he could have created a situation, should have manufactured it. He could have made it happen. Now, I've always appreciated Cesaro. So, it's like, eh, I wish WWE and Cesaro would have been able to come up to terms on a contract. Maybe they will, or maybe Cesaro will be heading to AEW or elsewhere. Who knows? But that was a hell of a hand. Not a franchise player, but man, B, C level player that when they're really hot, they could be like a B plus, A minus type of dude. Kind of one of those foundational bedrock types of dudes. In an era of wrestling across all these different companies where so many of these guys are so hard to take seriously in terms of the shit that they do in the ring, Cesaro was one of those dudes that felt legit. Cesaro was one of those dudes that wrestled with a real feeling physical style that a lot of guys just don't, even guys that are bigger than him. Now you might say, well, what exactly would you call the Cesaro swing? You know what I would call that? Entertaining people and getting something over, which has always been a theme to me with Cesaro, is he always maximized whatever television time he had. He always maximized his match time, always maximized his television time to the most of his capabilities. I mean, you talk about sometimes on the mic, eh, yeah, I gotcha. But when Vince McMahon said a few years ago when it wasn't his Stone Cold asked him about Cesaro and he says he doesn't know if he has it in terms of the charisma. Yeah, because Randy Orton and Charlotte are fucking charisma factories. Give me a fucking break. Good God. Like, it just doesn't hold up. It just doesn't make any damn sense. And it's always been one of these things where the WWE really vacillated back and forth between they're interested in Cesaro for a little bit and they kind of have an idea what the hell to do with them and then they don't care and they don't know what the fuck to do with them. Like, this is a man that spoke like five or six different languages. You know, he looked legit. He worked legit. Sure, he wasn't the greatest fucking talker in the world, but not everybody needs to be. Not everybody has to be. And if anything, Cesaro was done a detriment by the era of WWE that he was in because if he wasn't in the era, 
with more like outspoken characters, charismatic personalities, fantastic talkers, Cesaro actually would have stood out more because he would have represented counterculture. He would have been the difference. He would have been unique in his own way and it would have worked. But in an era where so many of these guys and gals can't fucking talk, can't be personalities the same their damn lives, can't even rent charisma from fucking the $2 store, or excuse me, Dollar Tree or whatever the hell. Like, he was always going to struggle just a little bit. But it sucks. Because I look at this company and for somehow, some way, they look and they still want to pay like upwards of a million dollars a year to <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. But you're willing to let Cesaro walk? Cut Dolph Ziggler and give that money to fucking Cesaro. Is that so fucking hard? And even if you say, well, Cesaro was probably asking for more. Good, because he's a significantly better fucking hand. He can actually take him seriously. He's not going to be sitting there rocking some middle school girl twizzies in his goddamn head. Looking like a ridiculous ass piece of crap. That, of course, belongs solely to... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. So yeah, when I see that news that Cesaro and WWE didn't come to terms on a contract, it was like, oh man, nothing to really rage about because Cesaro may have been asking for way too much money or he might have asked for something and he didn't really want to resign anyways. He wanted to take some time off because he'd been there for years. WWE could have had some interest, but they're like, we're only going to go to a certain point and I could also potentially understand that. I've always felt like this company did underserve Cesaro a bit. Again, never going to be a guy that you give a long-term run at the top. And again, if you think that he is, it just either speaks to how disconnected from reality you are or just how low your standards or the standards of professional wrestling as a whole have dropped in recent years. But he's absolutely a guy that you could have done more with. I mean, this is a guy, didn't he win an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? And they never really followed up on it. Wasn't he just wrestling and defeating Seth Rollins at WrestleMania like less than a year ago? And then a few months later, you're turning around and jobbing him fucking out. If anything, Cesaro was a bit of a victim of the Titan Tower machine. In terms of the malfunction of said Titan Tower machine. Because it used to be the Titan Tower magic could take some of these guys polish them up a little bit, and get the absolute most out of them. And now, these days, it's more like the company, the Titan Tower Machine, does everything they can to piss on them and get the absolute least out of the talent they possibly can. Now, as far as the whole Cesaro going to AEW is going to be great and it's awesome, is it? They've already got a bloated fucking roster. What's going to be so sizably, seismically different about his AEW time Versus his WWE time. Really. Seriously. And if you think that Tony Khan is going to sit there and do a whiz banger of a better job with Cesaro in AEW. What the fuck are you smoking? You have way too much recent evidence that indicates that no he really fucking won't. He might get it right with one guy and he'll get it wrong with five or six others. That's not a great batting average either. He may be better than Vince's current batting average, but what the fuck is that even saying? Personally, for me, I'd rather see Cesaro just take some time off if that's what he chooses to do. He's earned that right. You know, relax. Probably not hurting for money, I would assume. You know, still early 40s, so still probably has a few really high quality years left in professional wrestling. Now take a few months off, rest your body, rest your mind, and then, you know, sit, take a look back, look at the scenery of the business, look at the scenery of AEW, WWE, and see, you know, how it might best fit for you, where you might best fit, where you might be able to do the best. Well, nothing wrong with that. I just, I've always been a little frustrated though with WWE admittedly, because they could have done more with this guy. They could have. To say that they got the most out of him they absolutely could have is bullshit. As much bullshit as saying that he should have been a multiple time world champion and a guy that should have been at the top of that federation. That's also bullshit. Now there's some type of happy medium there. I will always respect Cesaro for being that type of dude that whatever he was given, he always took his 
fast foot forward and tried his damnedest to get it over to maximize his time. And it wasn't always maximizing his time just in terms of I'm going to do a high spot or a flip or some other pussy ass bullshit. So yeah, it kind of sucks that this dude that should have been one of those you know, mid-card, upper mid-card foundational pieces for a decade that was a measuring stick type of guy at his level that you would work guys up and down the card through Cesaro. That's just never really consistently manifested and that is absolutely the fault of the Titan Tower machine. That's on Vince. Like it wasn't that hard. And they couldn't even get that right. So if he goes to AEW, I wish Cesaro the best of luck. God, I hope they know how to use him. He sometime comes back to WWE. Hopefully, maybe he can leverage himself into a better position. Sounds like, feels like, he left and didn't burn any bridges, which strikes you as the type of dude that Cesaro is. You would think that Claudio would be able to go back there and at least get some type of push for three to six months until Vince loses interest again. But whatever, fuck it, get paid. Get made, get laid. But yeah, you guys can tell me what you think about the news of Cesaro leaving WWE. It probably felt like an eventuality. It's just unfortunate. 